areas of ICT now technologies and secure societies. And today I will be presenting the webinar on secure societies, which is the second webinar from the series webinar Wednesdays. Still, we are giving uh, some time so that others join. So in the meantime, I would like to give you the following points for your attention. The session will be recorded, so please make sure to keep your microphones muted for the session. If you have any questions, please use the chat box. These will be addressed at the end of the session. So good morning all. Yet again, it's me, Mark Mela, and today I would like to start off the, by describing the contents of our webinar. So first of all, we're going to discuss the open calls in secure societies, some information on the security scrutiny, support facilities that could aid you in finding partners, an example of a security topic, and then we conclude with our support services. Yet again, if you have any questions during the and proceeding of this webinar, please uh, use the chat box available and we will address your questions at the end of the session. So open calls for secure societies. So here the mission of the security program is to ensure a high level of security for European citizens. The importance of security research is not just about developing new technologies or applying emerging technologies, but this is also to understand, for example, um, the violent, violent radicalization and develop effective policies. So in other words, um, the following calls, which are infrastructure, AI and security, disaster in society, fighting crime and terrorism, and cybersecurity security and cyber security are there for a reason. In a nutshell, the, the work program is there to address the following points, which are, first of all, to reduce the loss of life from natural and man-made disasters, to protect our key infrastructures from natural and man-made disasters, and also cyber attacks, to develop better products and technologies for our practitioners, and finally, to protect our borders from entry of undesirable people and goods. We start off from the um, infra call. So basically, in the infra call, the protection and improvement of critical infrastructure is addressed in order to avoid any disruptions and threats. As you might be aware, nowadays, cities are totally dependent on the infrastructures, and obviously, their resilience needs to be ensured. Apart from that, there is also protection for the soft targets, which is being addressed in the research area within this call. Here, I would like to emphasize that if you are going to consider to apply for this call, please make sure that you read the eligibility and admissibility conditions. Because in these conditions, then these are very important information for applicants. For example, if you are going to involve a critical infrastructure operator, like for example, the energy distributor, the energy distributor needs to be part of your consortium and he needs to have tasks which are assigned to him. Another term which is very frequent um, in the security work program is the term practitioner. And practitioner refers to a person who is registered to do a particular occupation in the terms of security and civil protection, for example, in the case of Malta, the police and the civil protection. So yet again, if you are going to apply for this call, make sure that these, these entities, which are either operators or practitioners, are clearly outlined with their tasks accordingly in your proposal. AI and security. Um, nowadays, um, AI has become an under important topic for even law enforcement agencies. In fact, many member states and associated countries have ongoing initiatives to modernize the law enforcement agencies' technologies and tools. However, AI is a, is a the significant needs a significant um, technical and financial investment due to which unfortunately certain countries on a smaller scale like for example in our case may be lag in this 
and so in bringing um, the need of advancing um, AI for law enforcement agency to a European level could even create um, economies of scale and also aid in providing some sort of standards and domain in this area. So obviously, um, the scope uh, behind this call is to pave the way for a possible future establishment of the European hub for the support of law enforcement agencies. Here, um, the, the hub would support the improvement of the daily work of these law enforcement agencies in terms of quality of things that they have, but also increase the protection of their tools and infrastructure, especially nowadays uh, the, um, the criminal intent is using sophisticated tools, and obviously um, law enforcement agencies need to be equipped accordingly to combat the criminals in this sense. Also, the hub will uh, foster an area or, 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 or or the idea of testing uh, testing all the equipment and tools necessary in, in terms of AI that can be used um, in, in this regard. These are the upcoming calls. We have one under infra and we have three under AI. Yet again, um, make, make sure that you look at the eligibility and admissibility conditions. Um, in the case of infra, for example, there, there's the need to have at least two operators from two critical um, infrastructures and from two different member states or associated countries. Another important note here is that the project needs to be completed within 24 months. Disaster Resilient Society, as the name implies, and this is about protecting society from disasters. As you might be aware, there is a growing risk from disasters resulting from either natural man disasters and thus the security of citizens, infrastructure and environment protection has become high priority in the European Union. This also means that the strengthening of capabilities in disaster management and even improving the resilience against CBRN attacks has become very important too. So, the idea behind this call, first of all, is to innovate in technologies that can be used either by society and first responders in order to, first of all, reduce um, the loss of life, reduce even environmental impact and the economic damages, plus um, including uh, anything which is related to weather events, earthquakes and volcanic events, and finally as well, combating anything which is related to crime and terrorism threats. These are the, the topics under disaster resilient societies. Yet again, I would like to mention that um, there are some subtopics, for example, under the RSO2 technologies for first responders, there is subtopic three, which is methods and guidelines for pre hospital life support and triage. And there is also subtopic open under the RSO3 pre normative research and demonstration for disaster resilient societies. There is also, subtopic three, which is first aid vehicles, deployment, training, maintenance, and logistics, and remote centralized coordination needs. Fighting crime and terrorism, uh, as the name implies, this is about um, all the activities that are there to fight crime and terrorism, and also mitigate any consequences that can come from this from this domain. Obviously, there is a current need uh, for new technologies and capabilities to address the fight and even the prevention of crime, cyber crime, illegal trafficking, and terrorism. Plus, also to understand these uh, terroristic ideas, how they are created and sustained. Um, this call is divided into main four areas, which are forensics, law enforcement capabilities, urban security, and ethical social dimension. And finally, uh, apart from doing research in this area, it is very important to keep in mind that we still need to respect um, the fundamental rights of human beings when it comes to free movement to the member states and also to respect their personal data. Another call, which is uh, border external security, and um, this call is very pertinent to, to, to many member states, especially in Malta. And this is about uh, the contribution for a further development of the European border surveillance system, Eurosur, 
and its interoperability with other systems. And this was finally ultimately um, you know, enhanced the use of new technologies for border checks, which is also in relation with the Smart Border Initiative. And obviously the aim of this call is to develop better technologies and capabilities which can be required to enhance the equipment and tools for especially rapid investigation and identification at border security. Whilst again, like in the previous call, respecting the free movement of persons and privacy. This call is also contributing um, to the supply chain in terms of um, new customs policy and even migrant smuggling. And these are uh, the topics and calls on their fighting crime and terrorism and border external security. There are a lot of subtopics as well. For example, on the FCP01, we have subtopic, new, subtopic one, which is new methods to prevent, investigate, and mitigate trafficking of human beings and child sexual exploitation and protection of the victims. Then we have subtopic three under the same heading, FCP01 which is developing evidence-based approaches to evaluate and further develop initiatives to prevent counter and violent radicalization. Under FCT02, um, which is technologies to enhance and fight crime and terrorism, we have money flows tracking. And we have subtopic four, which is development of deployment of technologies, tools, and relevant infrastructure to identify speedily terrorist content and prevent its pre-upload. And we have also subtopic open as well. Under BESO1, we have subtopic three, developing indicators at EU external borders on basis of sound risk and vulnerability assessment methodologies. And under BSO2, we have subtopic five, disruptive technology for non intrusive identification of hidden goods. This, this topic will be explained a little bit further in, in the proceeding of the, of the presentation as well. And we have subtopic open. And under BSO3, we have subtopic M3, which is improved systems for vessel tracking. And again, this is a very um, good topic in terms of our, our current situation. Improved system for vessel tracking, behavior analysis, and automatic anomaly detection. And obviously, we have also another subtopic, which is open. So make sure that if someone is going to apply in this case, as you can see from the subtopics themselves, make sure that you have um, on board, um, like for example, the Coast Guard, um, co um, customs officers, and maybe the free force as well, and law enforcement agencies, and so on. Make sure that operators and even practitioners are quite, are, are really identified in your proposal before applying. Now, I would like to also bring forward um, some information which is very useful for all those stakeholders that are interested in the security and um, research area um, i would like to point out that there are some communities that can be used for your benefit for example if you know there is the community of users which is a collation of practitioners from all over the member states and they use this platform to share their expertise and discuss policy in terms of practitioner research when and, and solutions. Then we have also DFR3, uh, which is a, is a forum for first time responders where they like um, come up with ideas and suggestions so, so that the industry will, will, will provide tools that they can use when they are on the front line, especially at disasters or other, other man made hazards. And then we have also the European Border Surveillance, the Eurosource system, which is a which is a complete system which is integrating with the different border security areas um, in order to prevent cross-border crime and irregular migration. So obviously I'm putting these um, initiatives here so that you can uh, by now start looking at who are the people that are involved and the entities that are um, taking part in these initiatives, but apart from all, and you have the opportunity to get to know who are those uh, beneficiaries that could be um, very useful for your consortium or else um, could complete um, the consortium that you are um, forming maybe or else um, you are part of the consortium and you would like to 
tag someone else. So obviously these these areas, these fora, are very useful to to find the, the partner that you are seeking. Apart from that, another good opportunity to find partners is um, the project um, catalogs. Um, here, um, the security the security area is always publishing the projects that have been um, funded. Um, and obviously, here you have the list of the of the participants per consortia. You know who the consortium leaders are. You know also the countries that were involved. So here we have three catalogs. I have made this image clickable, so there is a link. So you could view and get involved and get even informed of what were the project results of previous um, projects. Because obviously sometimes there is also um, a continuation in the calls, and some, sometimes there is also a reference to, to, to look at previous funded projects, for example, in, especially in critical infrastructure, infra, um, or usually, um, they do not fund the same area. For example, if there was a security project which was targeting energy, um, if there someone will repropose re uh, uh, research on, on the energy industry, it, it might not be favorable for you. So always take, take, take some time and do your research and see what was funded previously. And apart from that, make sure that you are getting acquainted of who are the, uh, the most active stakeholders in this arena. We move to the digital security now, and we obviously are discussing here cyber security. Here, the proposed activities in this call um, address economic and social dimension of security, of especially digital ecosystems. So this is done, obviously, to ensure a well-functioning uh, digital single market. Plus, there is a need uh, to secure and increase the trust in the digital society because it's an important uh, important target that obviously need to prevent any attacks on our cyber and physical systems so this call is primarily focusing on technologies to ensure that our infrastructure hardware and services um, and other means that sustain our digital system are prone to accidents and even criminal use so also um, since Cybersecurity is uh, across domain nowadays because we have many interconnectivities due to digital um, uh, environments that we are living in. And this call is also targeting um, not a particular um, area, but is across is across domain. So feel free to to try to to apply with your um, domain um, as well. So finally, and this call is also focusing on demonstrating the availability of state-of-the-art security solution, meaning that apart from doing the research in the lab, there needs to be some sort of market uptake, which obviously can be a benefit to the whole community. So these are the topics and calls under cybersecurity and also general matters. So here again, and the, for example, the RSO4 is a very important and in the case for Malta, for example, cybersecurity and ethical power and energy systems. And for example, yesterday we had <laughs> we had a power cut in certain areas in Malta, unfortunately. And let's say it was, uh, let's say that it could be a maleficent way to, to attack a country by, for example, attacking the system. So here, one thing that is important to understand in the security world program is that the research has a real, a real, um, the results of the research have a real use case here because obviously if we are uh, improving the resilience of a critical infrastructure like an electrical power and distribution system, it means that we are uh, making a whole country more, 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 more resilient against any form of attacks. Another uh, technology platforms that I would like to put forward here. And we have the EXO, and EXO um, are like have the mandate to 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 guide the, the commission when it comes to um, the cyber security cyber security domain. They are they are there to um, and used by the, the commission themselves as as some sort of, of of good reference when it comes to protection, for example, of the digital single market. And then we have also the NIS by uh, NIS portal, which actually is there to to implement the NIST directive, which is targeting um, 
the, the resilience of our networks and information systems. Yet again, and make sure that before applying uh, to the cyber security call, make sure that you know about these initiatives and see uh, do some research there as well, see who are the involved parties, and also make sure that you match make maybe what is being um, directed by these entities and the our initiatives, sorry, and in your proposal as well. Because obviously, um, remember when you are applying to a research program, it's very good that you are also aware the, of the policy side of, of of the research that is being conducted in the in the European Union. I would like also to put forward um, the the current projects that are being um, conducted in in cybersecurity. We have four. These have uh, have been I think um, have started some. Two years ago, we have Concordia, Echo, and Cybersecurity for Europe and Sparta. They have been backed even by a political decision and the, by the Commission as well. For example, Concordia is focused on implementing uh, a cybersecurity research implementation roadmap. Then we have Echo, which is more um, in creating a governance model, which will be used by the Commission. And we have CyberSec for Europe, which is much focused on different key domains, and Node 14, and there are some technology elements that are being considered as well. And we have Sparta, which is promoting um, innovation actions and research within the cybersecurity area. Yet again, um, you can see the importance of these projects, even the number of partners. There are like more than 100 something there. So, so yes, this is a this is a collaborative approach which is being um, mandated by different member states. Unfortunately, there is no representation from Malta. Um, hard luck on this, but obviously we have um, a contact that could be um, really willing to have uh, even a Maltese partner involved because yet again it's very important that we know what is being done. And you know European and a pan-European and dimension as well when it comes to cyber security. So um, I would like to um, have some time and discuss a little bit the security scrutiny because uh, this is something that is very pertinent and it's only done in the security work program. And obviously, security scrutiny deals with classified information. So when there is a case that in a project there will be an involvement of some classified or classified information, the, the proposal needs to go through needs to go uh, through the security scrutiny. So the security scrutiny is made up from national experts, which are appointed by each member state. And when there is a case that, um, for example, the applicant states in the proposal stage that he will be working on classified information, or else the web program itself um, is, is, is pointing out that classified information will be used, or else the uh, commission detects that there is a, some sort of classified information that will be used in the background, or else the project results will lead to classified information. The proposal after passing the technical evaluation will be then um, passed under scrutiny from these experts. And then they will give like um, a go ahead or on the classification. So, for example, if there is no classification necessary in this case, for example, um, the proposal will, will, will continue like the other proposal with no, no issues at all. But if there is um, uh, the need of having some sort of classification, this will be incorporated in Annex 1 of the grant agreement. Yet again, there is also a possibility chance of um, the, 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 the proposal doesn't pass through the, uh, the scrutiny because, because um, the applicant maybe doesn't have the, the right experience or skills or the know-how or even authorization how to handle the classified information. And thus, um, the process will stop there. So something uh, very useful here for those of you who would like to get involved 
in, in projects, especially in consortium building and also funding partners. So here I have listed some important events that you might and you need to be aware of. For example, the, in the SMI2G um, is an event that happens every January in Brussels, and there a lot of stakeholders which are going to apply for security calls meet. And apart from that, they even do uh, a lot of pitches where they express their interest in which call they want to apply and what um, topic they want to um, be involved in. Also, they outline the role. For example, there you can find even coordinators that are looking for partners and you can find even partners that are looking for consortia. So here I have listed and made it link clickable because there you have the presentations of the pitches that happened this year. Um, and obviously there are the contacts, the contacts of all members of the event. So feel free to roam around um, in this list and check who was um, there, who was also um, willing to participate maybe in the same call that you are interested in. And feel free to contact them and get involved and maybe um, be part of their consortium or vice versa. There is also another event, an important event that happens, uh, unfortunately this, this year it was, a, it was a virtual meeting and it, it is the CRM for um, Secure Societies Info Day, which is uh, an event that happens on three days in March. And yet again, this is an event which is really backed by the Commission because you have uh, project officers there. And there's, a there's, there's uh, the explanation of, of the work program. Again, you have matchmaking, which is uh, done by B2B sessions. Every participant has a time slot and can participate by having interviews with other stakeholders. So it's a very good way to get involved and get to know who is going to apply and do what in certain calls. So this is another um, link that I put there with information on the presentation. So you could know who, who was there and who was interested in what. Then there is the partner search uh, offered by Serena for Serena. Yet again, this is a good database filled with stakeholders which are looking for partners. So they want to participate in calls. Obviously, there is the funding and tender portal, which is uh, containing all the information about the security work program. And also, under each topic, there is the facility of knowing who is interested in applying. So please make sure that you are using the, this tool as well, because there is a list of people that are entities that are going to um, put in their interest in applying. And finally, there's the EN and database as well, which is uh, is there to, to help anyone finding the right partners for for any any project again. So I think this is quite obviously this is not exhaustive. There might be other means on how to find partners, but if you are uh, particularly new um, to this um, arena, um, obviously this is a very good start to start making your connections. So I would like now to pass to a security topic. And I mentioned previously that I'm going to discuss a little bit um, BSO2. So basically, I, I'm not going to into super detail, but I would like to explain how a security topic usually is written. First of all, and keep in mind that what is written in the work program is not that prescriptive. It means that this means that you can really mold your your research area or, or technology in order to accommodate and uh, what is being requested by the commission. So here, um, first of all, you have um, the specific challenge, which is giving a brief like um, introduction of what needs to be attained. For example, in this case, we need uh, an innovation in the terms of border security by using novel technologies into scanning, for example, illicit goods, and also um, aid the, the, the work that is being at border security. Especially yet again, there's the term practitioner, sir. Their security practitioner can refer to uh, the customs office, maybe, and to the law enforcement agency at border and so on. So, here, obviously, from the specific challenge, we have already an idea of what is about this, this topic. Then we can move to 
the scope, which is giving more details of what needs to be obtained. Yet again, um, nowadays, um, criminals have become more crafty. They are using better means to hide their weapons, their explosives, or nuclear materials, especially drugs, for example. And they are using um, very good means of hiding them into cargoes and rail, rail, rail um, train, 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 train cargo as well. So actually, this is something that is, is, it has been going on for, for quite a while. And obviously, to upkeep with the, with the malicious intent of criminals, we also need to um, upscale the current technologies that we have. So obviously, um, this call is looking for an innovative and disruptive technology that can produce a high, highly detailed um, photograph, maybe, or a scan of what is um, and, and it shows what is being hidden. Obviously, this needs to be done in a in a very short time, and obviously, it needs to facilitate um, the work at the customs and border security control. Obviously, when you start reading the, the topic, you will understand that obviously you need to involve maybe um, in our case from uh, a national perspective. In our case, for example, the, 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 the three ports, uh, the local customs, maybe someone who's doing technology on, on maybe x-rays uh, or research on x-rays or other imagery sources. So here you can understand who are the stakeholders that need to be involved in this project. Obviously, um, there is something that needs to be attained. So in this case, we have the short, medium, and long-term objectives, which need to be um, addressed in the implementation of, of your proposal. So make sure that you read carefully what is being requested here. And I, one trick that I really like to use when I'm reading a call, I would like to underline the keywords here, for example, you see Eurosur, Coast Guard Handbook. So obviously these need to be um, written or referenced at least um, in your in your proposal. You have again smart borders. So yes, the the policy is is always coming up again. So make sure that you are making links to the policy. Apart from all, you need to be aware about the CRL levels, and this was explained by. Uh, the previous webinar by George and Tamara. Obviously, the budget. The budget is a good idea of what kind of research is being requested, plus what kind of team that you have. Obviously, you cannot apply with only three, three entities for, for, for a seven million project because it, it, it's not enough, obviously. And then you have the overall budget, which indicates um, how much um, pro, uh, proposals will be funded. So, in this case, um, it should be three. So this um, um, brings us to the very end now of our presentation. So obviously we as NCPs um, are here to obviously spread awareness. The case in point, this webinar today, which was um, uh, considering the security course. Obviously we have uh, new webinars coming in the following weeks. So we as an NCP, even myself, I, I, I'm here to make sure that you are aware of what is going on. And we are here also to advise you, to give you custom, customized support, to help you. So we are your one-stop shop when it comes to Horizon 2020 issues. So please get involved with us. We can even do um, targeted um, events for your, for, for your request as well. Now, nowadays, since we are um, working in this um, situation, we are still available um, through uh, our digital um, systems as well, so feel free to get involved. We are still doing client meetings and we are still um, giving you our support, so feel free to contact us anytime. Um, we are seven in all. This is our team, which is every, every team member has expertise in different areas, so we are covering um, all our our, all the program, so feel free. We have Antea Fabri, who is our director. We have Lily uh, Vazileva, who is our senior executive. So Pujaya, who takes care of energy transport and major financial issues. And uh, Steve Pujaya, who is taking care of innovation in SMEs and space and access to finance. Tamara, um, um, who is taking care of climate and swaps. 
Eliana, who's taking care of health and research infrastructure and food. And finally, the Dersey as well. So some final tips um, before we leave. Um, obviously, as mentioned previously, make sure that you are carefully reading the eligibility and admissibility conditions that are following every call and topic, because these will guide you, for example, how many operators, how many practitioners, or for example, how much the project duration is to be. Obviously, read the, the topic description carefully, start underlining what are the keywords, maybe start to also point out any references to policy, look into previous projects as well. This will help you again. Make sure that you address thoroughly, thoroughly the selection and the work criteria. Respect any the page limits, which are obviously bound to um, the proposal template. Um, any access, for example, that exceeds 70 pages will not be considered. So consider that. Clearly describe what you want to achieve and how you can do that. Apart from that, make sure that you have a very multidisciplinary team which is offering different capabilities so that you tackle um, the challenge appropriately. And make sure that you have um, submitted at least the first version prior um, to the deadline. And we are in a very good situation right now because obviously um, the, the deadline for the security call is the 29th of, of August. So we have ample time to start working on this. Another thing that we can do as NCPs, we can vet your proposal, we can look at it, we can give you some hints, we can make sure that you are um, giving a good, good substance to the proposal itself. So please feel free as well to bounce any uh, proposals that you are working on. Also, apart from that, we can offer our um, support in finding your, 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 your participants as well. So feel free to get involved in this as well. And finally, um, I would like to conclude with some resources for help. So these are all links that you can use and roam around in, uh, after this webinar. We have the funding and funding support in the portal. Obviously, there is a lot of information about all the calls, not only the security calls there, all the program. You have the um, research inquiry service, which um, can offer even um, support to any request that you have on a particular call or even legal and financial issues. You have the classification of information. It was mentioned in the security scrutiny part. Uh, what is this classification of information? So make sure that you are acquainted with this as well. Obviously, there is the security work program, and there is the uh, RID 2020 page. And finally, there is um, our MCSP page where there you can even be updated on our events, not only as a, from the framework program team, but also from all the MCSP technical units. So this brings me to the end of our webinar. Hope um, that you got some good information. And now uh, I think we can open the floor for any questions. Steve, um, I don't know if there were some questions since I've been. Hello, Steve. Um, uh, yes, at the moment uh, there are no questions, but okay. um, maybe we can give a, a minute or two to see if so. not someone has a specific question. Uh, maybe Mark. In the meantime, I assume that all the um, presentations will be available. Yes, correct? of course, of course, of course. Um, obviously, the, all the registrants will receive um, a copy of of the presentation and also the recording of our our, our webinar as well. So yes.
seems everything was a bit clear. <laughs> uh, hi, can you can you hear me? Yes, please. Uh, my my name is Alex Douglas Rumbura. And hello, I, hello. Uh, my name is Alec. Hello, Alec. Uh, good. I I represent Cross Culture International Foundation, which is a, an NGO based in Paula. Yes. Okay. Now I joined in a bit late, uh, but what I want to just ask is that, in terms of the scope of this call, it would sort of uh, point to me that it's more suited to security um, organizations more than you. Yeah, but but you said can you repeat you from the coastal? From I'm I'm, I'm from an NGO called CCIF Malta. CCIF, Cross Culture International Foundation. Cross Culture. Yeah. And um, we were looking at this uh, call from an NGO perspective, where we then possibly look at uh, a, a consortium that includes the police and security uh, organs within uh, the consortium members that are that in the to together but um, just going through through the through the documents and what you've said uh -huh. um, it would sort of point to me that it's more geared and suited to police and, and security not 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 really um, um, in fact one of the good things about um, the security work program is that it can involve a myriad of entities which are in a way involved in security. For example, if you said um, you're a cross culture, I think, you, are you involved in, 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 in migrate, migrants, in a we, sense? We, yes. We, no, not a, on a broader scale, but we are. We work on anti-human trafficking. So on ah, issues sorry. relating to trafficking, yes, but on issues relating to asylum and other issues, no. Um, but for example, there is a FCT fighting crime and terrorism, FCT01, I have mentioned that all of you are um, already in, but there is, for example, new methods to in, in, in prevent, investigate, and mitigate trafficking of human beings and child sexual exploitation. Yeah, that's the one we're Protection of victims. Do you, do you see yourself fit in this? Yes, that's one we were actually inclined ah. to go into because our consortium is actually organizations that are working in the area of um, oh no if you are doing um if you are doing some sort of work in, in line with this subtopic um it, it, you are in a very good position to, to to look for partners and also maybe uh, be involved in a consortium so yes um this is very fitting in your case um, child exploitation trafficking of human beings so so yes um, go for it um, Obviously, we can even meet up and personally, or not personally, no, <laughs> to a video conference and discuss this matter. Um, no, no, that's, that's good. I, I'm in contact with Tamara and the other uh, Okay, person. all right. Very good, very good. Uh, yeah, I think the, 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 the main takeaway for, for in this case uh, between us would be that we, we set up a meeting and discuss this um, further because obviously um, I can use my, my network abroad and also, as mentioned previously, um, all those facilities there that can help us in finding partners. And obviously, if you are working in this um, in this realm, you are very fitting to, to be part of this project. Yes. Oh, that's good. All, all, all basically, I want uh, as much information as possible because I've also scheduled a meeting with the with our consortium that we have in place to sort of look into the issues and then come up with them. Can you repeat, please, because um, it was a bit slow. So, I, was wait, I was waiting for this meeting so that I can also talk with our uh, possible consultant ah. okay. uh, for the way forward. So I think that sheds a bit of light in. OK, um, planning so Tamara has, has your contacts already. Um, so yes, we can set a meeting even before um, this week or next week and discuss your, your your potential um, application further. No worries. Fantastic. Thank you. Hi, Mark. Um, it's George. You have a question in the chat box about uh -huh. third country participation. Third country participation? Uh huh. 
Uh, in what sense, George? What's the question? If they can oh, question, I'll read the question for you. Hi, Mark, and thanks for the presentation. I would like to kindly ask you to explain more the possibility of for third countries participation, especially those advanced countries such as Japan, Singapore, USA. How can they uh, participate, especially in DRS calls? Thanks. In DRS calls, um, obviously, when um, when certain countries, and uh, one thing that we need to consider before applying in the case for member states and non-associated country, in, in, in a sense, third countries, uh, we need to look at the general annex. Because in the general annex, there is a list of those countries that are um, automatically eligible to apply. Now, in the case of certain developed countries like USA and Japan, maybe they cannot apply directly to, 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 to this call. Um, unless there is a, a already an agreement between um, the Commission and, for example, USA. Usually, this is more um, evident because there is a, like a, a US EU call. In that sense, obviously, the participation from the um, United States is, is automatic. But in this case, um, for the RS, we need to check the eligibility criteria. Yet, yet again, this is something that we need to do, and then we need to also to refer to the general annex. If the country is is not listed there, it could be um, we can have issues. But obviously, we need to check case per case. Uh, um, can I can I follow up on that question as well, Alex? Um, in the in the guide that uh, that annex is there uh -huh. right, for the countries because we also cooperate with an associate office. Uh, of ours, which is in Zimbabwe. Okay. So can I get the list from the from the call? Um, the, the the general annex is always updated, so it's better to always download um, the latest okay. version because obviously sometimes the treaties can be made or can be stopped. So um, it's it's a living document, so make sure that you always have the delay, latest delay precious um, document because things can change. Yes, yes. Um, I can give you a copy maybe uh, in our meeting as well. Yes, please. I think that would help a lot because... Uh, yes, okay. Can, I, I will know this. We can, from inception, include some other countries that are other source, source countries, you know, where uh -huh. um, the cases that we get in Europe either are originating from a country that we want to include. Uh -huh. But obviously that's something that um, it's not up to us as NCPs and it needs to be um, at a political governmental level between the countries. So that's yeah, okay. But at, at least if we get the list, it would have uh -huh. uh, the, the, uh -huh. the, link, the link of the document, then we can verify. Yes, 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 we can, we, I can give you a copy of this. No Thanks so much. Okay. Um, anything else, Steve? No, I think those, that's uh, that's it at the moment. Um, I think uh, those are all the questions. So it's up. So if you want to close off, uh, feel free to all close right. off. So thank you very much for participating in this webinar. As stated previously, we are here for your um, assistance and help. Um, so I, I'm going to give you two seconds to look at our emails so please feel free to drop us a line if you want to uh, further information um, on any issues or any related uh, topics within the horizon 2020 framework program so after two seconds Steve, i think we can close up this meeting thank you very much